On the shores of Lake Ontario stands the Canadian city of Toronto. Over six million people live in the greater Toronto area, making it one of the largest urban regions in North America. West of downtown at the mouth of 16 Mile Creek is the town of Oakville, home to the Burl Oak Canoe Club. Transworld Sport paid a visit here recently to meet up with the latest member of a Canadian sporting dynasty, a man by the name of Mark Oldershaw. It all started with my grandfather back in 1948 in London. It was his first Olympic Games and he went to 48, 52 and 56, followed with my two uncles and my father going to 1972, 76, and 1984. And uh, then, yeah, I, was, I guess I was the last one to, to join the team in 2008 and uh, 2012. And 2012 was back in London where he started it all. My dad and my uncles were, were all kayakers, so they definitely wanted me to go that direction, but I kind of rebelled a little bit and went with the canoe like my grandfather did. And, and uh, for me, it was just kind of what I enjoyed more. I always loved the feeling of the canoe, the longer stroke, the, the powerful stroke gliding along the water. The 30-year-old Mark is a London 2012 bronze medalist in the Canoe Sprint C1 1,000 meters category. He's also a third generation Olympian. Of the last 17 Summer Olympics, there's been an older shore competing in eight of them. Bert Oldershaw was the first at the 1948 London Games, and it was fitting that 64 years later, in the same city, his grandson Mark won the family's first medal. Yeah, I mean, it's something I, I've always dreamed about growing up, you know, it's what I did most of my kind of school projects on as a kid, and, and just something I have always dreamed about as long as I can remember. And, and then eventually, you know, when I started taking training seriously, it became less of a dream and more of a goal. And uh, once I made the Olympics, you know, I, I made a new goal of wanting to get an Olympic medal, and, and that's what going to London and, and getting the bronze medal was all about. Mark is coached by his father, Scott, who competed in the kayak sprint at the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics. That's it, out early, exaggerate the catch. Wait on the paddle early. Scott has guided Mark from a young age. Dad has also been in charge of the Canadian teams at four Olympics, including the 2012 London Games. Mostly we kind of work in partnership, so it's, it's guiding. I mean, I've never been a coach that yells and screams at athletes, so it's been a partnership with him and the other athletes I coach. So, you know, it's talking about, you know, sharing ideas on what he needs to do and what he needs to do better. Top hand, chest level. I mean, it can be hard sometimes, you know, when he's coaching me at the dinner table and, and being my father out on the water, but we've uh, established pretty good boundaries that we know when he's my coach and when he's my dad, and we kind of separate the two. As a youngster, Mark enjoyed a successful junior career that included two World Championship gold medals in 2001. Growing up in a family heavily involved in competitive canoeing and kayaking, he was never short of inspiration to help him follow his own Olympic dream. This is uh, something my grandfather gave me uh, after I won the Junior World Championships in 2001, and it's actually the paddle that he used at the Olympics in London. Uh, he was fifth place in the in the doubles canoe. Um, it doesn't look much like what I use today, but uh, it's uh, just a really nice memento to have, especially because uh, he got, oh, I think almost every athlete that was there competing to sign it. Uh, he passed away. Uh, a few years ago, and wasn't, wasn't able to see me go to the Olympics, but uh, it was just special to know that we could kind of share. Mark trains with his good friend, Adam Van Kuverden. One of the country's most decorated athletes, Van Kuverden has won four Olympic and eight World Championship medals in kayaking. The 31-year-old has also been coached by Mark's dad since he was a junior. I think they both mentioned that having each other, you know, right from an early age, uh, you know, sort of competing for results, I think, helped both of them, you know, along the way to where they eventually got. So it's definitely inspiring to have, you know, somebody like that around you. 
Yeah, Adam's been amazing. Our, our kind of partnership has been really beneficial both ways. I think uh, I think it helps a lot that he's in the kayak and I'm in the canoe. So we can do a lot of training together, but we don't have to race against each other. You know, we do almost all the same training on the water. We're in, in different kind of groups, training groups, but off the water, we do everything together. We have the same coach, you know, basically the same goals. Uh, and, but then when we get to races, we get to cheer each other on, support each other. But not everything has been plain sailing for Mark. While he should have been concentrating on qualifying for the 2004 Athens Olympics, which would have been his first, a health scare almost ended his canoeing career before it really started. It ruled him out of Athens. In 2003, I just developed a, a tumor in my hand. Uh, it wasn't life-threatening, but it caused, you know, a, a, a lot of pain. I was just in constant pain, you know, I couldn't train properly, uh, couldn't even sleep properly. Um, it took at least a year or so to kind of diagnose it and, and have two surgeries to finally get it removed and get my, myself back on track. So yeah, that, that kind of kept me out of contention for 2004, but it also kind of motivated me uh, again and make me came back, come back to training uh, that much more intensely and with that much more focus and, and passion. Training on the water takes up most of Mark's time in the summer months, while the harsh Canadian winter forces him south to warmer climes. He also spends many hours in the gym, refining his technique and building up his core strength. Well, when people think about canoeing, they think a lot of an upper body sport. We do use our arms and shoulders a lot, but what we use our arms and shoulders for is to to set up that connection in the water, get the paddle in the water, and it allows us to use our legs and our core to push the boat forward. The all-around strength of top canoeists enables them to paddle at speeds of up to 20 kilometers per hour. On top of the physical strength required, large amounts of stamina and mental toughness are also needed. Classed as a sprint, a 1,000 meter race takes around four minutes to complete. It's called sprint canoeing, but you can't sprint the whole time. Uh, you know, you have to kind of find that fine line of, of, of how hard you go. It's like driving a car and not quite put, pushing the gas pedal all the way down. You got to find that kind of that limit and go just right on the on the edge of, of how hard you can go. And with an Olympic bronze under his belt. Mark went to last year's World Championships in Germany full of confidence and returned home with two more medals in the 5,000 metres and the 200 metres relay. Looking ahead, Mark's long-term focus is on the 2016 Olympics, which will take place in the Brazilian city of Rio de Janeiro. Oh yeah, definitely, I mean, Brazil is, is the next goal. You know, I have a Brazilian flag on my wall at home that I look at every day and and it all is leading up to that but there's definitely short-term goals in between there's a world championships every year world cups every year that we focus on uh, every year to kind of as a stepping stone towards Brazil but uh, that's the main end goal and uh, I'm hoping to win in in Brazil kind of turn that bronze into gold and that's uh, all, all the training I'm doing is, is leading up to that and 2016 may well see Mark write a new chapter in the Oldershaw family's sporting story.